Hey, in this video, I'm going to share with you five things, five weaknesses you need to be aware of with ChatGPT. It's an extraordinary tool. It's something that you should be using. It's going to save you hours of time. But first, you must be aware of its shortcomings. So let's go and look at those five reasons, those five things to be aware of. Welcome, my name is Mark Wickersham. I'm a chartered accountant. I run the Value Pricing Academy and I help accountants and bookkeepers all around the world run more successful, more profitable, more enjoyable accounting firms. And in this ChatGPT series, we're going to be looking today at what are the five things that we must be aware of when using ChatGPT. We've done other videos on ChatGPT. If you've not caught them yet, videos like how to get started with it, the big benefits, why you really must be using it, what is great at, and also videos on how to use it. But we also need to be aware of its shortcomings. So let's look at those. I'm going to share five of the biggest ones, the five that particularly accountants and bookkeepers must be aware of. So number one, the first thing that you must be aware of is it's not always accurate and reliable. It's not always correct. Think of think of ChatGPT as being your virtual personal assistant. Think of it as being a a your new employee. And, and just like with a another human, another employee, they sometimes get things wrong. If you think about it, when you hire a brand, when you hire somebody uh, in your team and you give them things to do, they don't always get it right every single time. Well, ChatGPT is a little bit like that as well. And the reason for that is largely because of something called human bias. And there are two aspects of human bias in the way that the model was created. So just by way of background, ChatGPT uh, was created by a company called OpenAI, uh, which was founded back in 2015. They've been developing ChatGPT ever since. It went public in November 2022. Since November 2022, there are hundreds of millions of people that now using it to further train the model. And when it was created to build the model, there were really two sides to it. So firstly, it had to be trained in information. The question is, where did that information come from? Where is the information that's inside chat GPT? Well, it was scraped from the internet. It came from stuff that's been created, written by humans. And as we know, when we do searches on more traditional search engines like Google, for example, we know that not everything we read is correct. When we read things like Wikipedia, we hope it's, it's pretty good, but sometimes there are errors because a human wrote it, a human put it in there, and us humans, we are not always correct. So firstly, the source information that ChatGPT was trained on is subject to human bias. It may not be correct, some of the information. And the second aspect of it is once they'd put in the information, they then had to train the, the algorithms, the software, in how to interact with humans, how to deal with the request and give the answer. And so it had to learn how to, how to interpret what was being asked, to go to its bank of data, and then to figure out how to give an answer. And as the model was being trained, a human would be saying whether the answer was correct or not. And again, we have human bias, because sometimes ChatGPT might come up with an answer which the human says, yep, that's a good answer, that's correct. It might not be correct, they might not know, or it may be wrong, and vice versa, of course. So we have those two aspects of human bias that we have to be aware of, that, and therefore we have to take everything that, that comes out of ChatGPT with a pinch of salt. Just like when we do a Google search and perhaps read someone's blog post, just because somebody's written a blog post doesn't mean they necessarily know everything. So we need to fact check stuff. We need to make sure that we use it We use it to assist us. Like an employee, we use it to assist us, but we need to double check everything. We have to use our own professional judgment, our knowledge, our skills, our experience to decide if the answer is correct or not. 
Uh, second issue to be aware of, and this is particularly important if you're a professional, if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, then you have to be aware of confidentiality and privacy. So one of the things that when you, when you first set up your account with ChatGPT, it does quite rightly recommend that you do not put any personal information, any confidential information, any information about your client. Because the model is learning. And when it was released in November 2022, as people were using it and they were putting information in, that was also being submitted to OpenAI to help to help develop the model. And there was back in March 2023, there was an instance, there was a uh, there was a bug in the software. There was a breach where what was happening is is some people, some users' chats were appearing in other users' chats. So if there was private information, then other people would have had access to that. Now, they fixed it quick within a week, uh, but uh, the general advice is, and ChatGPT, OpenAI tell you this, is do not put confidential information into your chats. Now, this was also a big concern in, uh, in April of 2023 because Italy, Italy decided to ban ChatGPT, uh, something that I was familiar with because I, was, I went to Venice on a, as a, a, the start of a vacation uh, a, a week or so later, and I couldn't access my ChatGPT account. So in April 2023, Italy banned it. And the reason for that was because they were concerned about privacy issues. And they gave uh, OpenAI an ultimatum, some things they had to fix before they would lift the ban. And at the end, towards the end of April 2023, uh, one of the things that OpenAI built into ChatGPT, if you go into your settings now, you can go into your settings and there's a privacy option, which means that you can choose if you want not to participate with training the models and therefore keep your chats private. And I think that's a good thing. Personally, I haven't done that because I think it's a good thing for us all collectively to help train the model. So I just make sure that I'm careful what information I feed. I don't put personal information, private information. Uh, but there is that extra level of privacy if you want. So please be aware of that. Uh, if you are putting in things like data, numbers, whatever, don't put stuff that can be your, your client's names, client's details, and so on. Okay, that brings me on to number three, the third one. And if you are an accountant or a bookkeeper, this one will be particularly uh, important to you. And it may be something that you see as a good thing as well. It's not good at math. It's not good at maths. Its primary strength is, is, is language. It's a natural language. Uh, it's a large language model. It understands natural language. And, and so whilst it has an understanding of numbers and it has an understanding of rudimentary maths, uh, basic mathematics, it, it, it does, when it gets more complex stuff, it does get things wrong. So the great news might well be is a lot of people in the accounting profession are, are, are cheering and celebrating because, ah, good, it will not replace us. It will not replace us. Well, I don't know about that. That's a discussion for another day. You see, ChatGPT is a large language model, but there are other AI tools. Uh, and what we've seen, what we've seen really since the la launch of ChatGPT in November 2022, we've seen an explosion in terms of the uh, the number of AI tools coming, coming out. Now, AI is not new. It's been around for about 70 years now. It's not new, but it is gathering speed at an incredible pace. And, and really, ChatGPT, when that was launched, was a catalyst because now there is a huge AI race going on amongst all the main players. Uh, Microsoft invested in OpenAI. So Microsoft have put ChatGPT into Bing and Google then had to react to that. So they, they launched BARD before they wanted to, before they were ready. There is a, a Amazon uh, are looking to be big players in the AI area with uh, what they're introducing. Uh, Apple, Elon Musk is, is creating Trust, uh, sorry, Truth uh, GPT, which is going to be, he wants it to be a big competitor to Chat GPT, which is interesting because he was one of the original founders of OpenAI back in 2015. Anyway, let's not get too sidetracked by some of the history. But other than to say, this is moving so, so fast. So um, 
At the moment, ChatGPT is not good at maths. It will get better, and also there are other AI tools that may well be better at doing mathematical stuff. The key thing we have to be aware of is that because it's not good at maths, we should not be using it, for example, to do complex tax calculations. And there's a re another reason for that, which we'll come on to in number five. Uh, but at the moment, um, as I record this in 2023, uh, ChatGPT shouldn't be used for, for example, completing tax returns and working out tax liabilities because it's not good at math. It'll, it may well get the answers wrong. So at the moment, accountants are still very much needed. Bookkeepers are very much needed. So just be aware of that. It's a large language model. Its strengths are in natural language. It understands language and and, and that's where we should keep, where, where we should focus on our uses of it. Okay, number four. Four is a really interesting one. Number four is it suffers from what's called hallucination. Hallucination is the word that's been used. And what it means by this is that it gets things wrong confidently. <laughs> in other words, in other words, it, it's been trained to it. It predicts what is the next most likely word as it's coming up with its responses. And if ChatGPT doesn't know the answer to something, it has this tendency to make something up. And when it makes something up, it's very, very convincing. So just to give an example, uh, a little while ago, uh, a month or so ago, one of the things that I used it for from a personal point of view, which was really cool and quite powerful, was I was going away for a, a weekend, a long weekend break, to a part of Portugal, I don't know, and I fed it some information about when I was setting off, when I wanted to get back, how many days away I was going to be, what, I want, what sort of things I wanted to do. And it came up with a step-by-step -step itinerary. It was awesome. It was a really good itinerary of what I should do uh, over, over the three-day long weekend. But then, as I got closer to, the, to the, the trip, I went into Google to check a few things. I wanted to plot a few things on Google Maps and so on. And one of the things that it gave me, it recommended a hotel. And I said to it, I said, why do you recommend that particular hotel? And it then gave the reasons. And it sounded amazing. The hotel sounded like a brilliant hotel. And, and so I then got to the stage of booking the hotel. I went on to Google. And yes, the hotel did exist. But nowhere near where I was going on my holiday. It was a completely different part of Portugal. Uh, and it gave, so it gave the wrong hotel with, the, a, a, with an address that was the wrong address. I went and then did a, used Google Maps to go to the address. And it was somebody's house. The address was where I was going on holiday, but the hotel was nowhere near there. So I, I, there, were, there was that particular instance of hallucination. It also recommended a particular walk, and the walk sounded amazing. It had a name this walk did. It, had a, a, it gave the distance. Again, when I checked it out, yes, that walk existed. It was an amazing walk, a well-known walk, a, port, a po popular walk in Portugal, but it wasn't where I was going. It was a far end of Portugal. It sounded convincing. But it was wrong. So we have to be aware of hallucination. It, it's getting better. It will get better. But when it doesn't know the answer, rather than saying it doesn't know the answer, sometimes it will make something up. So that goes back to my point number one. Number one was, remember, human bias. It's not always accurate. Well, it's also not always accurate because it makes stuff up. And so we have to make sure that we take all the responses with a double pinch of salt that we fact check everything. But if you're an accountant, if you're a bookkeeper, if you're a professional, then you, you would know that anyway. We should, we should always use our professional expertise, our knowledge, our experience to double check everything, just like we do with search engines. So that brings us on to number five. And number five is another big one. It's not up to date. So when it was launched in November 2022, it was trained on data. It was supplied with data from the internet up to September 20. Uh, let me start. September 2021. And so, 
it doesn't know anything after then. Now, it will start to as it gets more trained uh, and and there will be future versions of ChatGPT after after four um, where it will have more up-to-date data. But the data isn't up-to-date. And so we need to be aware of that because it, one of the things, so we can't use ChatGPT for things like, what is the weather today? What were the football results last night? We're used to doing that in Google. We can go to Google and other search engines and we can ask it, what's the current exchange rate between dollars and pounds? Uh, and so the search engines are still great for the latest things, the weather, the exchange rates, the football results, but ChatGPT isn't. And so we, again, must be careful if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper and, for example, you want to use it for something around the area of taxes. Well, taxes change every single year and it may not have the tax data and the tax tables for the last couple of years. So, again, we have to be very, very cautious. We have to be very careful if we're using ChatGPT for technical stuff like taxes because it's not good at math the hallucination issue, and it's not up to date. It can still be used. There's some powerful stuff we can do with taxes. I'm gonna cover it on another video, but please be aware of those weaknesses. If you found this valuable, if that's helped you, if that's been useful, then please click the like button. Uh, please also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you hit that bell notification, you will get notified when we create brand new videos. Also, let me know in the comments below, in the comments below, uh, what was the, of all the five things I've shared, what was the one that's been the most eye-opening for you? What, let me know in the comments, I'd be interested to know. Finally, I have some free stuff for you. We created a little while ago an ebook, uh, which uh, is 30, 32 pages. It looks like this, and uh, it tells you uh, more about ChatGPT, uh, some great tips, some use cases, some examples. So if you haven't got that yet, we'll put the link below so that you can grab that. Uh, also, we have a Facebook group that you can join. Again, I'll put the link below. Uh, we have lots more videos. I'll put some vi links below to some recommended videos. Uh, I also do a live stream regularly. So if you wanna come along to join one of my live streams, we stream them to YouTube, we stream them to uh, our Facebook group. So check those out. And if you wanna go deeper on your learning, then we have a training course on ChatGPT for accountants and bookkeepers. At the moment, we are making it available as a bonus, a free bonus to members of our academies. So if you're not yet a member of one of our academies, the best place to start is the Profitable Growth Academy. I'll put the link below and you can go and check out the page to find out more about that. Uh, you'll find out how we help people build a more successful profitable accounting firm. But also remember there is a complete training program on how to get the very best out of chat GPT. I will see you on another video. Uh, so check out our other videos on chat GPT. Particularly, I've got one called Five Ways to Transform Your Accounting Firm with Practical. We're gonna go into the chat GPT and we're gonna go practical. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.